This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. <sighs> this is my least favorite part every episode. I'm leaving that in there. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Hard Fried Podcast. That's Michael Combs. That's Mike Martin. And Keith Clanton. Hello, how's your mom and them? We are thrilled to have our resident Jennifer Tilly expert, Miss Ashley, here today. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, say it again. Hey, guys. Love it. We are back with episode 13 of our Queer Horror Series. We'd love for y'all to follow along with us, so please be sure to give the season's movie listing a peep over at the Hard Fried Podcast on Instagram. Now, come sit a spell. Let's chat about Seed of Chucky. She's been nominated for an Oscar. Jennifer Miss Tilly. And critically acclaimed. It is true. Now, Jennifer Tilly will take on the role of a lifetime. We need a surrogate mother. Ah! Come to Papa. Ah! What the hell is going on in here? She uh, came on to me. No wonder her career's in trouble. <laughs> Seed of Chucky. I should have played Aaron Brockovich. Could have done it without the Wonder Bra. Rated R. It's waiting music. Okay. <laughs> it's cute. Released in 2004, Seed of Chucky was written and directed by Don Mancini and stars Jennifer Tilly, Brad Dorif, John Waters, Billy Boyd, Red Man, and S Club 7's very own Henna Spirit. Michael, <laughs> kick us off. So this movie, we get a nice opening credit scene of what looks like someone i don't know having sex and then giving birth that's a nice way to put it there's a lot of sperm it reminded there me of is. look who's talking me too oh, it does. <laughs> that's what i thought about too they probably straight did. from look who's talking mm-hmm. yeah. this movie does a lot of homages so that wouldn't surprise me if that's where they took it from so the oop I don't know what the hell that was. The movie opens with a little girl getting a doll for her birthday. The doll just happens to be of the Dolly Dearest type and murders the parents. We then find out that the scene is a dream by said doll who's being caged for a ventriloquist for his use at competitions. The doll is an orphan but wants to know their roots. The doll sees a preview for a movie called Chucky Goes Psycho starring Jennifer Tilly and realizes the two dolls, Chucky and Tiffany, are their parents via a maid in Japan stamped on their wrist. They escape and make their way to Hollywood to find their parents. The doll uses the amulet to resurrect their parents. Jennifer and Chucky kill the special effects technician, and Glenn wants to know why they still kill. Jennifer Tilly discovers the body and is taken home. What a journey. <clears throat> okay, first of all, let me just apologize in advance because my dog has a toy and he's playing with it. And honestly, if it's keeping him quiet, he's just going to play with it. So if you hear crinkling noises, that's what that is. Okay, let's jump right in. Yes. Um, so the little girl's having a birthday. The cute little girl with the bad wig. Anybody else <laughs> clock that wig? Oh, I did for sure. Terrible. It was it was terrible. Terrible it was wig. Very terrible. Covered up half of her forehead. It was a terrible <laughs> wig. Okay. The bangs were wonky. The it was terrible. Raggedy. Was it as bad as Jennifer Jamie Lee Curtis's in Halloween too? It, oh, it, yes. This yeah, was terrible. Because it was on a child, so it was even more awkward. Look, there's several bad wigs in this movie. <laughs> well, there's two that I can think of because I wrote them down in my notes, but the one doesn't come until the very end, so we'll talk about <laughs> yeah, that later. that was a good one, But too. you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so, I mean, I feel like at this point, like, this was pretty much just, like, the opening of every horror movie at this time. Like, you got to start with a kill. You got to start with some, something exciting, right? Yeah. I will say this. Richard, who's the dad, his fall down the stairs I really liked. I did too. I actually have that in my notes that I thought it looked cool. It looked really good, right? Um, so I thought they did a really good job with that. And then, of course, the mom's death. What other movie does that look like? Psycho. 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 Yeah, mm-hmm. so they did a good... But I kind of liked that she got gets wrapped up in the shower curtain and falls out. And that's pretty much what kills her. I'm assuming she broke her neck. Mm-hmm. That's what I was assuming. I hit her head. Yeah, because you see blood coming out of... Yeah, so I liked that. And then I wonder, what's this little girl doing while this is going on? I was wondering that, too. I just assumed that she was hiding. Yeah, but she was, I guess. she didn't seem very afraid. No, No. when she walked in. Yeah. 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 
you killed my mommy and daddy. Yeah. And then he pees. You're pissing your pants. Yeah. yeah. Over and, and over again. Yes. Yeah. And that's when he wakes up, of course. And he's in a cage. And I got to say, I felt really bad for him. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think there's several points in this movie that I feel bad for him. Poor yeah. thing. Like, okay, obviously kind of we don't know what his or her name is at this point. So we're just, we'll say they, right? Yeah. Because um, at this point, we're not really sure. And I think it's pretty clear that this is the spawn of Chucky and Tiffany, right? Because yeah. I know in The Bride of Chucky, obviously we haven't covered that, but Tiffany gives birth mm-hmm. at the end of Bride of Chucky. That's how it ends. So we can all assume that this is their child. Do we think they're cute? The teeth. I can't get past the teeth. I just got to get it out really there. Really sharp teeth, and I don't I really understand that part of it. But Mm-mm. I was just going to say... No. No? No. Oh. They're cute in their own way. I did not think that he was cute until he started talking. And his little British little accent. Very cute. Was real cute. But yeah. I I don't think that they picked the best um, physical traits of both Chucky and Tiffany to go on. Well, kind of like what Ashley was saying. Where the hell did these teeth come from? (laughs) Right. Yeah, because Chucky nor Tiffany have jacked up teeth. They have real teeth. They and his are yeah. like s- sharp, little yeah, sharp, sharp teeth. little look like little piranha teeth. Little yeah. piranha teeth, exactly. I will tell you guys while we were sitting here watching it, I looked over at Michael at one point and I was like, I need to find the Glenn Glenda action figure like today. <laughs> Fuck Tiffany. <laughs> fuck Chucky. I want Glenn or Glenda. He's so cute to me. But I think a lot of it is once he starts talking and he's got his little accent and you realize how cute he is. Especially when the, I guess I'd call him a ventriloquist, although he's not really a ventriloquist. But when the ventriloquist put, puts the rat in there and then he bends down and he's like Pets cuddling it. it. Oh yeah. my God. So Hello, cute. Hello, little fella. <laughs> yes. I loved it so much. I really did. So, <clears throat> one thing, because it's been a long time since I've seen this movie, I thought to myself, wait, was that really a dream or did that happen at some point? And, of course, later on, we, I guess, realized that it was just a dream, but, I don't know. It seemed very vivid, right? It was very vivid. Oh, you just mean the opening? Yeah, I felt like it was very vivid, very specific, <laughs> so then it makes me wonder, damn, did this, like, happen? At some point, but I, I don't know. I guess it didn't. And that's fine. Did y'all think that he ran incredibly fast? Yes. Real fast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he really fast, did. Yeah. It was like, where are you going? To win the Olympics? Real fast. It I will so say, quick. the one thing I really love about the Child's Play movies, and, and even the television show, is they rely very much on practical effects and puppetry versus a bunch of CGI. However, in this scene, very clearly CGI. CGI. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is a little ridiculous, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is. A little ridiculous, but good for him. He wanted to get away. And he did. I don't blame him. Parents. That guy was an asshole. An he asshole. He was the worst. And I'm kind of upset that he didn't like meet his demise at all. Right. I know. Mm-hmm. But they are good. Maybe he'll get rabies and just yeah. die. They didn't even Maybe. want her to fly because we got that... Yeah. Psycho homage as well. Well, you know, he's not going to be able to earn any money anymore because he doesn't have, Glenn Glenda yeah. has run away. So maybe he's going to starve to death. And I'm okay with that. That's I mean, his demise. me too. I guess at this point, we technically think his name is Shitface. Shitface. Shit shit yes. That That's sign. what they call him. Shit isn't face. It like, shit is it Psych and Shitface or something? Psycho? Psycho and, and Shitface. Shit his face. name is. Yeah, like psych or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, psych and shit face. I just remember shit face. I do remember shit face. Um, So then we go to the movie set. Um, So it's almost like we get another opening. I'm using air quotes here. Opening scene with the Santa Claus in the graveyard. mm -hmm. But even I feel like if you've never seen this movie before, you're like, "Mm, something's off. Because when he's walking on the ground, you can see the snow like moving. Mm -hmm. Like it's. Not snow. Clearly. So. Yeah, clearly not snow, right? And then, of course, we find out it's the 
new movie. What did you say? It was Chucky called? goes psycho. We get a lot of psycho references. A lot of psycho. We do. We do get a lot of psycho references. Chucky goes psycho. Um, and we've got Chucky and Tiffany on the scene. Of course, these are animatronics. Um, and I feel like. You know, they show the director at one part. I feel like they missed an opportunity, and Don Mancini should have played the director. Made a cameo, mm-hmm. like Alfred Yeah, Hitchcock. made his own yeah. little cameo. Yeah, yeah. why not? Because yeah. the director's only in that one scene, right? Everybody else you see are like texts, like puppet texts for the most part. I feel like he could have played that role. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen that, but that's just me. I low key kind of like any time a movie does like a movie within a movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me too. I like stuff like that. Like, New Nightmare. Scream 3. Obviously a big one. Yeah. yeah. I do too. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> this is when we have S Club um, <laughs> joining us as Jennifer Tilly's assistant. What did we think of that casting choice? I never listened to S Club 7. Or well, I don't think were, anybody so. really ever listened to S Club 7. I don't know. I bet she never had a dream come true. Until the day she found <laughs> Jennifer <Stop>. Tilly. <laughs> I just remember watching it it's for the first. Weird. It is weird. I remember watching it for the first time, and I was like, "I know her. Where do I know her?" And then when it clicked, I was like, "How the fuck did she end up here? <laughs> of all places?" <laughs> well, not even that. How did she end up here? And who the hell thought? You know how I want to play this? That girl from S Club. Well, 7. obviously <laughs> she auditioned for it, so it makes me think maybe she was trying to break out into an acting career. Was S like, Club 7 huge at this point? Like, is this stunt casting? 2004? Um, I would say, like, earlier 2000s. I was going to say, because, yeah. I mean, Never Had a Dream Come True was out when I was, like, a freshman or... Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and then I never really listened to their music. I watched that terrible television show on, <laughs> God, what was it back then? Like, Fox Family or ABC mm-hmm. Family? What Yeah, that show? was ABC Family, yeah. I'm with you. I don't know what I the didn't... hell they're talking about. So they had a show, and it was called... Wasn't it just called S Club 7? Mm-hmm. Oh. And it was just a television show because it's seven of them. There's seven of them in the band, and it just I mean, Followed it was a scripted their, show. like Party of Five, but they sing and they sang. There's seven every of episode. <laughs> yeah, no. But to be fair, that show kind of like blew them up because that single you're talking about, I don't think it would have done nearly as well what had there not called? been a television show. Never had a dream come true. Yeah, yeah. I gotta see when it came out. Uh, it just always killed me because I'm like, no party like an S Club party. Yeah, <laughs> she definitely did go S Club <clears throat> two thousand two thousand. I mm-hmm. told you so. I was like eighth grade going into freshman. It's just crazy to me. Like I never understood those bands with like seven people, but only one ever sings. Like what are y'all doing here? Maybe that's why she wanted to break out into acting because Joe was getting all the. All the lyrics. She definitely verses. was, because there was a British show I watched called Primeval, and she was the star of it. That's where I really? knew her from. Yeah. Oh, never heard of that. Okay, mm-hmm. well, moving along. <laughs> um. Well, and can I just say, when we first see Jennifer Tilly, and she's eating that candy bar, I thought, there I am. There you <laughs> are. In the shadows, <laughs> <laughs> eating a candy bar. <laughs> In hiding. <laughs> In hiding. <laughs> Love it. Eating a good bar, Mr. Good Bar. I would too. Yes. And she's wanting to get roles and she finds out about a role in a movie. The Virgin At that Mary. point, the, the hot rapper Red Man was mm-hmm. making and wants to be the Virgin Mary, as she said. Oh, you mean Redman? Redman. 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 Yeah. <laughs> she Mr. kept saying, Mr. Redman. Mr. Man. Can I yeah. call you Red? <laughs> Mr. Man. May I call you Red? <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm not usually a fan of like these music people in movies like that, but I thought he was kind of fun in yeah. this movie. We well, too. I mean, this is a He's fun very movie. charismatic. It's not like seeing Busta Rhymes in Halloween Resurrection. Terrible. Oh, my God. Even right. Tyra Banks couldn't save that one. Okay? <laughs> anyway. So, <clears throat> Okay. So she's wanting a new role, right? Jennifer Tilly's like frustrated. She wants a new role. And everything's going to Julia Roberts. And everything yeah. is going to Julia Roberts. So she meets with Redman and she's going to read for the role of the Virgin Mary. What I loved about this was that she actually wore white mm-hmm. to the audition. And honestly, she looks so fucking good. And she doesn't really have much makeup Mm-mm. on. Like she's just very natural. I thought she looked great. Um, And I just have to say, 
Do you think Julia Roberts would play the Virgin Mary in Redmond's movie? Absolutely uh, no. not. No. Right? Absolutely when not. When he said that, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe roles are going to Julia Roberts, but she wasn't there. What was the first one they were talking about, though? I could play Aaron Brockovich and without a wonder bra. Like <laughs> that one? <laughs> well, didn't she say she auditioned for another one, though, that went to Julia Roberts, right? Well, I almost. I don't, remember. I don't know if she mentions it or. I mean, I know they mentioned Julia Roberts, but I almost. I think what happens is, like Ashley says, she talks about she could have played that role. Oh. She's just mm-hmm. saying she could have played that mm-hmm. role. Because let's not forget, Jennifer Tilly is an Oscar nominee. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And she we, mentions it. She mm-hmm. does mention it. And we know that Julia Roberts has won an Oscar for Aaron Brockovich, which, in my opinion, undeserving. But we won't get into that on this episode today. Okay. So <laughs> Keith's like. I only watch her in Still Magnolias. Look, (laughs) I'll be honest with y'all. This is just my own personal opinion. Still Magnolias and August Osage County are her best performances. Everything else is Julia Roberts. She's like Jennifer Aniston to me. Jennifer Aniston in anything is Jennifer Aniston. Sandra Bullock in any movie is Sandra Bullock. Except for the blind side. She's Sandra Bullock with a southern accent. Big fucking deal. (laughs) Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't. I think those are Oscar-worthy performances. That's just me. Again, that's just me. Love Sandra Bullock. Like Julia Roberts, okay. But, you know, whatever. Okay, so we move on from this audition with Jennifer Tilly and Redman to the prop room, right? Yep. So we go to the prop room. So this is when Shitface, we'll just say Shitface, breaks out of his little box. <laughs> Y'all... I gotta say, I thought it was so cute when he looks up and he sees Frankenstein. He's like, oh, pardon me, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Pardon me, sir. He's so polite. He is. So polite. Good manners. He's so sweet. Um, And then, of course, he sees his mom and dad, which at this point are just the puppets. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the animatronics from the movie. He sees the Mark of the Beast. Made, Japan. Made in Japan. Made. Made in Japan. So that's got to be his parents. Um, so one thing that I thought was a little weird. You know when the tech goes in there and he's taking her apart? Does he not seem like oddly pleased with himself? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It was weird. He's like smiling. It was weird. Yeah, Isn't when he weird? was like taking the back off, you could tell that he was feeling <laughs> something. Enjoying he's enjoying mm-hmm. himself yeah. way too much. Yeah. Now, I should say at this point, Shitface has the amulet. And he yep. has recited the, recited the oh wake up all day wake up. Blah, the blah, 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 blah. Yeah. he's recited the chant and so they're actually awake at this point and so Jennifer Tilly's feeling all of this and uh, oh Chucky comes to the rescue and takes his head off mm-hmm. so and good old Chucky and Tiffany are back at it again and they're back at it I love it so much they're back at it just killing and kissing. <laughs> So, I, Same. God, yes, the makeout <laughs> scenes are like <laughs> uncomfortable. It is. I never ever did. I mean, it's even like in Bride of Chucky, they show them like have sex. Oh and it's God. like, why are we watching this? Like, it just feels so bizarre. Weird. Well, you know, I really think they took it to the next level in this one. I think uh, they were yeah. just like, let's camp the fuck out of this. Yeah, over the top. Because you see that. You know, a little bit later on, we can touch on it later, but you've got Chucky, like, jacking off into a cup because they need a sperm. You then see you see Tiffany, her boobs, full yeah. out, you know, just, flash him, yep. and you see nips and every. I just, it's funny. Like, I I think after the Bride of Chucky, they were pretty much like, fuck it, let's just, let's just go there. <laughs> so, I'm kind of glad well, they did, though. It's fun. So, it's it's kind of bizarre to me that, like, I looked it up, and Bride of Chucky came out in 98. Mm-hmm. Six That's years. a long time between that one and this one. Six years, like, yeah. Yeah, I guess I didn't really realize how long it was. Me either. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I mean, that's kind of a long time for the sequel to Bride of Chucky to come out. Yeah. For them to even think that people cared enough six years later. To make it. To know. Well, and you also have to take into consideration, like, there's a lot of puppetry involved. Mm-hmm. So that takes longer. But still, even then... Because, I mean, I remember watching Bride of Chucky and being, like, at the end of it, I was like, oh, shit, we're going to get another sequel because there's going to be a baby doll, I guess. <laughs> it's but, almost like, like they hit doll. you with it when, you're, when you've when you kind of forgotten about it. 
Which I guess is smart. Because to be fair, The Bride of Chucky was like years after Child's Play 3. Yeah, what was that, 91, 92? I guess it could have been about uh, the same amount of time, Yeah, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think the first one was 88. Yep. Yep. So they put all four of them out in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay, so this is a little off topic, but now I'm just curious. What's everybody's favorite Child's Play movie? Oh, the second one. Hands down. Second one is good. Mm, I think the first one for me. Okay. You're yeah. a purist. Yeah. <laughs> I like the first one, y'all. When I was a kid. I mean, it's real horror. Yes. When I was a kid, Chucky was the only thing that scared me. Uh-huh. Nothing else did. And my uncle told me that Chucky lived in his closet oh. so that I would never go in there. And as I was watching this as an adult, I thought... This is what I was afraid of. <laughs> yeah, a little doll. <laughs> yes, yes. I just remember my uncle being like, now, uh, Chucky lives up there, so don't come in here. I'm like, why, why? Why'd you say that? And I was so scared of it. And now I'm like, what? I, you could have just kicked that little doll down the stairs. All the way, like a football. A football. 100%. You know, it's funny because I remember... When I was younger, my cousin had rented this. Mm -hmm. And, of course, my grandma didn't allow me and my other cousin to watch it because we were too little. But I caught glimpses, and he looked so much like my My Buddy doll. Do you remember those? Yes. That the My Buddy doll went under my bed, and I never played with it again. I never had one because I was terrified. Really? Mm -hmm. I loved my My Buddy doll until I saw Child's Play. Mine had brown hair. I don't remember that. I don't remember doll. what mine. You don't remember either. the my buddy doll. Mm-hmm. Oh, my, my buddy. buddy. I mean, literally, this, I go, this is what it was you're like. You're gonna go, my, my buddy. buddy. Well, Definitely. this was like what it was mimicked after, right? Yeah. Well, the and then they had kid doll, sister. Remember kid, kid sister? That so was like the girl version. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they anyway, were like swinging on swings and stuff. Yeah, playing <laughs> together. Yeah. So I never played with my my buddy doll after this. He went under the bed. Um, I think my favorite though is Bride of Chucky. That would be it's a fun next. one. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. a little ridiculous, but there are some moments in that movie that I can watch now. It cracks me the fuck up, and I'll give you a really good example. After they've stolen the older couple's like Winnebago, <laughs> and Tiffany is cooking, and she's like, hum, 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 you know, humming to herself, and she walks to the closet, and she opens it, and there they are, dead. And she goes, oh, excuse me and then like takes what she needs out of there and she says, i don't know why but i will like fall in the foil it's so funny it's so funny anyways obviously i think bride of chucky is when they went a little bit more into the comedy realm mm-hmm. and then seed of chucky it was like all bets are off uh, well i think it's safe to say that from after bride of chucky on everything was off like well i'll say cult and curse to me they brought back more horror it feels like a legit horror movie now the television show obviously there's some camp in which i love the television show but in cult and curse it's definitely more horror that was a long time between seed and cult or yeah curse. well this one was the last one to be put in theaters the mm-hmm. other ones weren't yeah the last theatrical release well it didn't so. do very good i don't think did it the seed of Chucky? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't look at any of that. Okay. So this is kind of when the debate begins. Like, is this Glenn or is it Glenda? Mm-hmm. Right? Tiffany says it's a girl. Uh-huh. Chucky says it's a boy. And that's where they come with the name. And they go mm-hmm. back and forth. And so really the rest of the movie, it's up to whoever them to decide if they want to be a Glenn or they want to be a Glenda. Yes. But what I really like about it is... Tiffany is so much more progressive than Chucky. Yes. Because she's like, whatever you want, you decide. And he's like, you're a boy. Mm-hmm. I, right? I mean, I feel like Which that would be very accurate. Chucky. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But well, because just... you got to figure, it, this is also Charles Lee Ray. And do we really think that Charles Lee Ray uh, is progressive? would be progressive? No. No. Now, if you watch the series, you find out that he does become a little bit more progressive. And he talks about having a non-binary child, right? Yeah. So he's whatever. In today's standard, he's good. But at this point in time, he's feeling a certain type of way. But Tiffany's all about it. 
Um, and so then Jennifer Tilly comes in, and I think what I really like about this scene is when Jennifer Tilly comes in the room, you've got Tiffany, and she's like, do it, Ashley. Do her voice. What does she say? She's Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, she's, she's so obsessed with her. And I'm she's like, fan-boy. same girl. Same. She's just smitten. Listen fan-boy. to her voice. Yeah, we'd all be the same. We'd all be the same. Um, <laughs> She's not bothered by that dead body on the floor well she, she thinks, thinks it's, it's fake body. i mean to be fair she's in a prop room so she thinks it's fake and then she picks it up and makes out with it yeah she kisses yeah. it like, right my thing, though, is, with her candy bar with like, her candy bar <laughs> she it's hidden in chucky yes. yeah <laughs> and like I, I feel like the head i probably i can see like being like oh she thought it was fake but there's like a shit ton of blood all over the floor that's the thing yeah. I mean, and why would you stage that in a prop room exactly like that? and like Clearly, she wasn't looking at the dolls because they were covered in blood as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, she was just really she just focused wanted on that getting chocolate. her, her she Mr. Co- Good she Bar. Girl yes. Yes. Nosh, yes. Well, what I love is when she finds out that it's fake and she screams, of course, and they're escorting her out and all the paparazzi are there, including John Waters, who's like the big paparazzi guy in this movie. He says, what were you doing in there when you saw the body? And she's like, not admitting to anybody that she's eating a candy bar. No. She's supposed to be on a diet. Because she's yes. supposed to yes. be on her diet. <laughs> yes. Because that was so funny. Because they show her drinking that like slim fast or whatever it was. Yeah. I think it was, I think it was called like Shake Quick or something. Yeah. Shake yeah. Quick. Yeah. It was yeah. something. No way in hell is she admitting to anybody that she went in there to get her candy bar. <laughs> in peace. She's like, no comment. <laughs> I also just think it's uh, funny because, like, obviously she's a kind of a starving actress in this. She's, like, yeah. wanting parts and whatever. So I think it's funny when she walks out and everybody's like, oh, my God, can I have your autograph? And she's like, sure. Like, in the middle of this chaos, yeah. yep. there's, like, been a murder and everything. And she's like, yeah, I'll give you my autograph. Well, she's you know, star. they say in Hollywood, all, a bad press is good press, mm-hmm. right? All because, press. Yeah, all press. Because, to your point, she's a starving artist and now she's got attention. She's going to soak it up. That's when we see, was it Stan across her the parking lot? Yeah, her yeah. driver that she's yeah. fucking. Who's no. very, oh, well, this is, no? guess is going right into your next part, right? I don't think they are though, because she says at no. the end, she's like, "I haven't even slept with my driver," and he's, he's in, in love, love with, with me. Well, I think, I, but I think maybe there's there's something going on. Well, they make out. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, little. okay, maybe they haven't had sex, but I think she's like snobbed on his knob. Oh, oh I just think God. she's using him. I mean, she could be. Like, I think that she likes the attention that he gives her. Well, and, and it is apparent that he will literally do mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. for her. Well, he has that whole speech about how he loves her and he's going to tell her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, we already kind of talked about it, but Jennifer Tilly had met up with rapper Redman, who's making that movie. She wants the Virgin Mary part. He thinks she's not right for it. So she invites him over to her house to seduce him for the role. Tiffany and Chucky decide to transfer their souls into their bodies. We also find out that Tiffany says that the doll is a girl, and Chucky says it's a boy, and they name the doll Glenn Glinda. Tiffany inseminates Jennifer, and the pregnancy takes days because of voodoo magic. Chucky and Tiffany promise Glenn Glinda they won't kill anymore, but promptly Tiffany kills Redman, <laughs> and Glenn Glinda accidentally kills John Waters that Chucky is trying to kill. They then kidnap the chauffeur in place of Redman for Chucky's soul. Jennifer's assistant shows up and gets crispy fried via Glinda, who now has a split personality. Crispy fried. <laughs> crispy fried. She is getting hard fried over there. Original recipe. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's shake and bake. And I helped. Um, okay, so before we go into like a Redman coming over, one part that I really thought was funny is you see all this fan mail. <laughs> on Jennifer uh-huh. Tilly's and realize that fucking Joan is writing her all this fan mail so she feels <laughs> as club relevant. Oh my god. I was like, she is dedicated. They made her Jennifer Tilly into a diva in this, definitely. Yeah. She's like yeah. a Joan Crawford. Well, yeah. Kinda needy. They made her needy. Yeah, yes. but except Joan Crawford was actually getting fan mail. True. All of this is coming from Joan. Yes. She probably had all those other members of S Club 7 helping her write those letters. I mean, that was a lot of fan mail. Because they ain't doing that now. Mm-hmm. And it was all in different handwriting. It so. was. <laughs> yeah. It was. So, yeah, we does. also did not mention at all that yeah. Redman talks about Bound. Well, we, which haven't was got, in, uh, we haven't gotten there yet. Wait. He doesn't mention that until, until he comes did. to her house. 
There Is it was, not? I thought there it was no. only like, on the couch. There was like two references yeah. of Bound. Yes, there At were. At her house, though? Yeah, it's when he comes to her house, and they're talking, and he's saying how he's such a fan of hers. And she says, what's my favorite movie of yours? And he says, Bound. Is that what he says? I thought she, he, well, she, he, he said says, something about the one where you make out the, with that, that chick. With that chick. Oh, and then yeah. she says bound, and oh, then she yeah. says bound. that's everybody's favorite. Oh, because he, yeah, because then he asks her like something about Jeannie Gershon, and she's, she's like, like hang out "Oh yeah, her. we're, I mean, sure, we're friends." Yeah. Oh yeah, and then she's like, "Oh yeah, we can all three get together." Right. Yeah. She wants this role. And he got yeah. very excited about which that. they are still really good friends they in are. real life. Jennifer Gershon was actually on this last season of uh, Chucky. Which was really cool. And the other guy from Bound. Joe Manganiello. Or Joe... What? Say that again? Joe Esposito. There you go. I was like, Manganiello? (laughs) Was it True Blood? (laughs) Alcide? I don't know. Yeah, Alcide definitely wasn't there. I would remember that. (laughs) Um, So, okay. So, while Redman's over at her house. And John Waters shows up, too, to take pictures. Pete Peters. Snoopy little bitch. What'd you say? That's his name, Pete Peters. Is it Pete Peters? Yeah. In my notes, he's just John Waters. Like, yeah, it's John, John Waters. Waters. You know? Um, but he's taking pictures. I just think it's funny because he sees Chucky upstairs masturbating. And what does he say? He says little something person. about him being a little person. Yeah, yeah, a little person. But then he sees Tiffany, too. Bless these little people. Yes. That's yes. He <laughs> and he is so excited because, girl, he's about to make all kinds of money off these photos. Um, and then he leaves. And then Chucky decides to have a boys' night with Glenn. Okay. This is where I'm like, okay, how realistic is this? Obviously, this movie is not realistic. But they weren't quick to follow him. How did they know where he was? It's a good oh, like question. where yeah. John Waters was? Yeah, they just show up, but they weren't quick to follow him out of the mm-hmm. driveway. I mean, because he talks to him about, we're going to have a boys' night. And then they take Redmond's Hummer, I believe it is, mm-hmm. yep. and go. Like, how did you know where he was? Anyways, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, but who do we run into? Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> she gets run License off the road. plate, Britney won. Britney won. <laughs> yeah, she... Doesn't she, like, pass them and kind of, like, cut them yes. off and flip them off, right? I will say, that was a damn good Britney Spears lookalike. It was. It was. It looked just like her. It I mean, was. I just LOL'd the whole time. When her car went over and just went into Blew flames, up. I just died. <laughs> and then he says, oops, I did it again. again. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I like all those little references um, in this movie. I did read something about that, though, because apparently when the movie came out, they had to put like a disclaimer on there that Britney was not in this movie because people were like, "Is that Britney?" Yeah, I mean, it did look like her. It did. You know what? She should have done it. She could have done. I mean, this would have been a like in two thousand four. She for sure could have. Yeah, she yeah. could have done it. Made her some money, and then it just showed, oh look, she don't take herself too seriously. But did was she still in her good girl phase in two thousand four? Or was she like on the brink of going cray cray? Because like two thousand seven or eight was the breakdown. Yeah. Yes. Well, I remember. So in my high my high school prom, I remember walking into the prom and Toxic was playing, and I graduated in two thousand four. So we're like in the zone. In she's like yeah. yeah in the zone era, which was a good era. Yeah, it was a really good it era. Was. She was like borderline. Like honestly, if you if they had paid her enough to do a scene would that movie it. would have blown yes up. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean she did that in what one of the austin powers movies i mean right? if paris hilton can be in house of wax yeah but that's a little different like britney wouldn't have <laughs> even had to do anything except for turn around and flip off the camera right this would have been easy yeah. money which i mean and and on well never mind i was gonna be like and on the way to kill a paparazzi like that just seems perfect britney right yeah mm-hmm. like, <laughs> honestly considering all the paparazzi that right you know, she's been hounded with pretty much her whole life. That would have been a great fuck you to Symbolism. The yeah. Symbolism. Mm-hmm. Anyway, well, and who's to say they didn't try to get her? I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously they had that scene in mind. Yeah. So they were like, well, if we can't get her, we'll just get a look like A come. damn good look alike. Was that Derek Barry? Oh, my God. I bet it was <laughs> Derek Barry. No, I looked it up. It was a girl. I can't know. <laughs> Michael, we're joking. Do you know who Derek Barry is? No. Drag Race. Yeah, he was on Drag Race. He's a Britney Spears impersonator in Vegas, which I used to think he was really good, but I don't think he's that great anymore. Now I gotta look him up. Well, now he tries real hard. I actually feel like when he wasn't trying so hard to be Britney, I felt like I believed it more. 
but this is not going to turn into a drag race like, no episode no 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 okay so they kill john waters how do they kill him acid acid oh, to that the was face. gnarly wasn't it like and obviously that's probably mostly cgi i would say because his face literally disintegrates on camera mm-hmm. but it was gnarly it was mm-hmm. there's something about scenes like that that make me cringe a little just to think like some liquid some little liquid could literally just eat away your skin and down to the bone like it's mm-hmm. just i don't know it's an icky feeling i mean that's how i feel about <laughs> Like, I feel like quicksand used to be a really big deal when I was a kid. Used uh, to hear about it all the time. You never knew where you were. And I, I was like at. terrified of the thought of it. Yeah. Just walking into like the ground and just being sucked Sinking. into it. Could you imagine? No. I mean, it is real, but like it was in all those action movies. So. And in Mario. Yeah. <laughs> and in Mario. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. With the, with with the, the ca- sun. With the cactuses, <laughs> too. Yes. Those big cactuses. Yes. That is a really good point. Where is there even quicksand? Because, I mean, I know it's a real thing, but, like, where is it? I don't know. I mean, I would assume in the desert. Mm. I could think of a few people I'd like to push into some quicksand. Oh, Lord. It's in rivers and streams and beaches. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay, it says quicksand is usually found in the hollows at the mouths of rivers or along flat stretches of streams or beaches. Oh, okay. Where pools of water become partially filled with sand and an underlying layer of stiff clay and other dense material prevents drainage. So that almost kind of sounds like the way like undertow is when you're in the ocean. Well, ev- yeah, like what? Well, even when you're walking on the beach and like, you know, a wave will come up and you just stand there yeah, and your it pulls feet kind of sink money. into yeah. the, yeah. Oh, and it's all over the United States, okay. but mostly in Florida and the Carolinas, as well as the canyons of Utah, New Mexico, and northern Arizona. Thank you for that lesson. You're welcome. On You're quicksand. welcome. Now you, now you all know, stay away from Florida and North Carolina. Yeah. So don't go there. Or it'll get you. Uh, but this is also the scene where, like, Chucky, we he's really trying to get Glenn to be bad. Yes, he is. He's a bad influence. And Glenn is just like, I don't want to kill people. And... <laughs> Chucky's like, fuck that. We kill people here. Like, <laughs> that's literally like the vibe that he puts off. But, um, shit, where was I going with that? Well, it's an accident. Mm-hmm. Yes. He hit the shelf. He yeah. Hit the he shelf. Tried, he like praises him for killing him. And he's like, it was just an accident. I didn't even. Yeah. He scares yeah. him. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he backs up into that shelf and the mm-hmm. liquid falls on him. So he indirectly killed him. I guess. And then they take a cute little family photo with John Waters. I know. With Glenn, he looks so ashamed. His eyes are turned like down. This. and I don't Chucky's want to excited. be a killer. Yeah. Chucky's excited. Proud dad moment. It is. Okay, so... Um, so some shit happens, I guess, at the house. Um, I didn't really take many much yeah, notes on it. Yeah, prior to but. John Waters' character getting killed, they take them upstairs and inseminate mm-hmm. well yeah well they drug red man right doesn't he fall asleep yes because mm-hmm. they she, put something in the tiffany champagne. puts those pills yeah, they, in the and champagne then, and then jennifer tilly realizes they're alive and she screams a bunch and then she falls twice and gets knocked out and then they take her upstairs oh is that the scene where she's where jennifer she's tilly's fat. like god she's, she's fat, fat. Yes. and she's not even <laughs> pregnant <laughs> I'm like, girl, same. That was funny. <laughs> like, how dare you talk about Jennifer Tilly in that way? Um, and then we get the ter- turkey baster full of ew, Chucky sperm. It's uh, gross. And it, like, out. leaks out of there. <laughs> Honestly, what's more... Wait, have you seen um, Don't Breathe? Uh-uh. Y'all have seen Don't Breathe, right? Mm-hmm. I know you have. We watched it. On- what's grosser? That turkey baster with sperm in it or the one in this movie? Don't Breathe. It's gross, right? Yeah. It is. This is this whole concept is weird to me in this movie though. So that's kind of like a, a, a the, the thought How does doll sperm make a human thing, like baby children. Yeah. And he looks so happy to be jacking off and it just feels very to uncomfortable. To Fangoria magazine. To Fangoria magazine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it just Well, to be fair like the Oh my do- god, and Kelly Carlson on the magazine? Yep. Who? It, instead of Kelly Clarkson, it was Kelly Doug Carlson. Wilson. Oh, uh-huh. was it? I didn't even catch that. Yes. I just saw that face. It was like... The zombie face. D- yeah, the zo- literally like John Waters' face. Mm-hmm. 
on the Fangori magazine. Um, well, but the thing is about like Tiffany and Chucky, like whenever you know they become possessed, like they're like a human essentially. Mm-hmm. So that's why I can buy into the whole sperm thing. It's still weird. But, I mean, if you stab him and it can make him bleed or whatever, like, it makes a and little... And you see, like, when you're in that prop room and they take Tiffany's back off, you yeah, see Yeah, you can her... see her organs, yeah. her heart. And it's, like, beating. Yeah. Yeah, so... Anywho, so then we've got Jennifer Tilly with her morning sickness. Um, one part that I really liked about that is when she's in that limo and she throws up in her purse, her face is on that purse. It's like a portrait of herself on that purse. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I mean, it looks just like her. I would say it's intentional. She seems, oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Self-absorbed. And- yeah. Uh, I just thought that was funny. And then, of course, you have Redman coming over for dinner. Um, His dinner. I mean, she went all out for this dinner. That Did you see all the damn food on the table? Mm-hmm. I mean, she had corn. She had cauliflower. I'm pretty sure I saw Brussels sprouts. Mm-hmm. She had some kind of meat. What was that? Like a pot roast or something? Yeah. With potatoes. Do we think Jennifer Tilly would have cooked all that? Or did she hire somebody? Oh, that was she hired somebody. Oh, I'm sure she hired somebody. It was probably Joan. Probably Joan. Probably was. Oh, Joan was fired at this point. Oh. Was she? <laughs> yeah, she fired Oh, yeah, her. she said, and leave your key to her. Oh, yeah, that because was the she first tried night to shame he came her over. For, yeah. 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 And, and can I say, too... Why in scenes like this, and actually in real life, when a woman cooks a man dinner to tell him something important, the dude is always chowing down. He's eating the hell out of that food. Loving his life, not thinking, and like the woman's always looking like, I have something important to tell you. And he's just like, man, I love these Brussels sprouts. He's just (laughs) living his life. Why is it always like that? It's like that in real life, well, too. because the best way to a man's heart is through his stomach. True. <sighs> or poison. That's what they say. Which Tiffany finds out, uh-huh. doesn't she? Mm-hmm. She does. It's kind of funny you mentioned that. I didn't really think about it. I'm like, oh, maybe that's why they killed him the way that they did. Um, But we... That was pretty gross. It was gross. So I guess we can kind of talk about that, right? Because I loved it. <laughs> Tiffany goes down, and she's, like, really struggling with herself. But what I love about that whole scene is she calls, like, the a helpline. helpline. Yes. And she's like, oh, God, I'm about to do something bad. And he's like, we all slip. And she's like, really? And he's like, oh, yeah, I slipped a few weeks ago and it was a big old mess. She's like, God, I hate it when that happens. Like, she's just (laughs) having this really cute conversation with him. The cleanup took hours. Yes. (laughs) And then she goes down and ends up disemboweling him, Mm -hmm. but through his stomach. Mm -hmm. Which is, like you said, the best way to a man's heart. But we also find out, too, that... Jennifer Tilly has made this big meal because she wants to tell him she's pregnant. And he says, well, it can't be me because I had a vasectomy. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. So then, dun, dun, dun. How did Jennifer Tilly get pregnant? Um, I don't know, but that that scene where she gets up with that stomach, I just can't. It's gross. It's like steaming. It just makes me laugh. Oh, no, I'm talking about oh, when she's pregnant. When she's pregnant. Her stomach. Oh, when she wakes she up screams. with the stomach? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because they say it's what speeds up the process, I guess, because it's like... Voodoo. Yeah, yeah. paranormal. Mm-hmm. Well, because they have a whole conversation about like how long it takes, right? Or something. Yeah. I just it, remember them saying it was accelerated. Yeah, it's an accelerated voodoo. pregnancy, Chucky. It's voodoo magic, is um, what she says. <laughs> well, and then, of course, we've got Jennifer. She calls Joan. Right, because she needs mm-hmm. Joan's help. Nobody else will help her. She needs Joan's help. That's one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. The but, phone call? Yes. So before that, you've got Jennifer... Uh, oh. I'm sorry. You've got Tiffany watching the television. And she's like, oh, they're executing Martha Stewart this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know. It made me giggle. Um, and then it's like that good old throwback to the landlines. Because I remember doing this to my stepbrother when he would be on the phone forever. I'd pick it up, he'd be on the phone, and like I wouldn't just flat out say, I need the phone. I'd just be like, <clears throat> and then hang it back up. Mm-hmm. Like that way he knew that I picked up the phone. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I love that scene because Chucky, that's when he goes in and he's attacking her, I guess, yeah. throwing a blanket over her. I can't remember exactly what he does, 
But Tiffany picks up the phone and then she starts talking to Joan and Joan is like, what is that? She's and just she very says, confused. <laughs> and Tiffany says, oh, Bounds on cable. Gina, yeah. Gina Gershon is fingering me. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> that was a good the part. <laughs> I love that. That's my favorite part, I think, in the whole movie. It's so funny. Well, I just think it's hysterical that when she's sitting there and she's like, She's like, what do you mean? You're talking to me. And she's like, no, you're talking to me. Like, she's like going <laughs> on with the voice. It's I, poor Jennifer Tilly. Was I can very hear confused. you screaming. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. I'm no, just I'm being not. fingered by Gina Gershon. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things, too. I think about like these little lines that Tiffany says. And I feel like they did a really good job of portraying that she is a huge fucking Jennifer Tilly fan. Right. Yes. Like, yes. You know, it's not just, oh, Jennifer Tilly, she's a movie star. Like, she's. She idolizes her. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyway, I really like that scene a lot. Um, so then, of course, they decide to make the driver. What was the driver's name? Stan? Stan. Stan. They, they decide to make him Redmond's replacement because, obviously, Tiffany has killed Redmond. Um, one thing that drives me crazy about that is those... They've gagged them with, like, napkins or something. Could... Like a handkerchief. You can't just spit that out. Which she does later, At one point, yeah. mm-hmm. right? She spits mm-hmm. it out. So but, why wouldn't you have done that sooner? Yeah, why yeah. did you, I would have just spit it out right away? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, because she does when she's telling Joan to turn around, right? Yes, that's when what Joan it was. comes up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she spits it out. Yeah, and it's like, oh, all of a sudden, oh, you remembered you could do. Yeah, that? you yeah. mean the whole yeah. time you're taped. sitting there <laughs> screaming for Joan, like when she's down at the door, you didn't think, <laughs> and then yeah. yell mm-hmm. help, like mm-hmm. make zero sense. It does crack me up too. So this is just very 2004 when you see Joan walk up the steps and she's got those boot cut jeans on mm-hmm. that are soaking wet from the bottom. Because we all did. Because we mm-hmm. all did it. We all did. You'd wear your boot cut jeans. You'd cut a little slit in them to mm-hmm. cover your boots. Yep. And you could walk outside in the rain and... It'd be wet up to your knee. Literally mm-hmm. wet up to your <laughs> knee. <laughs> those jeans would soak mm-hmm. up that rain. Mm-hmm. But it made me laugh because they very much got that part right. Um, do, what do we think about Joan's death scene? Okay, so y'all, when she fell over the handrail, what was that? That well, dummy all, was terrible. Mm-hmm. The what? The dummy. Actually, like, <laughs> didn't... The way that she fell, she literally landed on her head. Yes. And that shit just made me go, ugh. Like, yeah, but then when you see the hands and they're just yeah, they're like, like this yeah. because it's a fucking resuscitation Annie doll or something. <laughs> That's exactly what it looked like. That's what it looked like. It did. It looked like a CPR doll. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And how she landed, like it was like, I, I don't. I, they I were obviously... probably like, well, she's on fire. They're not going to notice. <laughs> yeah. Well, That's true. all I noticed. <laughs> true. But we did. They're like, just throw her over. The, it's fine. Which again, at least they went practical because they could have CGI'd her falling. Well, and they kind of did at the beginning with Richard, right? So maybe that's mm-hmm. why they decided to do it a little differently with her, which I can appreciate because I love a practical effect. Um, and it was Glenda who now has a Southern accent. And a bad way. And a really bad, and bad makeup, to be honest. I kind of felt like the Glinda was very, like, Frankenverter makeup. Yeah, uh, he yeah. did look a little. I just, I don't know why, but when he starts talking and he's got his little, or she, has her southern accent, I just thought designing women. I thought That's I mean, all the I hair. thought. Girl, yeah. you been watching designing women while you were sitting in that cage. <laughs> <laughs> the wig was was my favorite. Yeah, it was pretty. That's so that's mm-hmm. bad wig number two, even though it's on a doll. <laughs> also, where did she get the wig? The makeup. Where did she get the makeup? Where did she get the supplies to make that to make dress? dress? Because she in, says she made the dress herself in thirty seconds. Yeah, where when did you do all this, girl? I would assume she just at least the makeup part. I would assume she just probably got from like Jennifer Tilly's stash somewhere. It takes me yeah. 20 minutes to put this face on. All of that happened in 45 it, seconds. It was quick. How? It was quick. I'm Movie magic. I guess she was like, you know, sewing that dress together in between going on boys nights and three-way calls. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she was, that's what she was doing while she was waiting on Martha Stewart to get executed. <laughs> Let me sell this dress, I guess. 
So Jennifer gives birth to twins, a boy and a girl, and Tiffany starts the voodoo chant to transfer souls and realizes Chucky wants to stay in doll form and re- and then she rejects him and takes Glenn Glinda. Chucky tries to kill Tiffany but kills the chauffeur instead. The police show up and the doll escape. The dolls escape and Jennifer goes to the hospital. Tiffany drugs Jennifer in the hospital to start the voodoo chant again. While chanting, Chucky breaks in and kills Tiffany and then Glenn Glinda kills Chucky. We then flash forward to five years later to the twins' birthday party. We find out the voodoo spell has worked, and Glenn Glinda's souls are in the twins, and Tiffany's soul is in Jennifer Tilly's body. The movie ends with Glenn opening a present that has Chucky's arm in it, which jumps up and grabs him. A la movie. Carrie. A la Carrie. Mm-hmm. Well, and there's another reference to Stephen King in the hospital. We'll get to that in a minute, but she has the twins. Okay, and it's supposed to be an easy decision for Glenn or Glenda. If she has a boy, you're Glenn. If she has a girl, you're Glenda. And she has twins, so we're stuck in the same predicament we've been stuck in the entire movie, right? Yeah. Um, and then she does go to the hospital. Although, where'd they have? They just magically had a pink, and pink a blue and blue blanket. blanket. Uh-huh. That's literally yeah. what I said. I'm too. For sure. <laughs> I was like, where'd y'all get? Mm. Amazon did not deliver back then. Like not in 2004. Today. Like, we were still wearing them cut-up jeans. Yeah, we didn't have primes, so no. I don't know where you got them. Well, maybe Glenn, Glenda sewed those up, too. In the 45 seconds after. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, did the dress, and then was like, well, I have this extra fabric. Let Might me as make well. some blankets. Yeah. For my siblings. And then he dyed the fabrics. Yep, yeah. that's exactly what happened. I did, handy. Laugh. I did laugh during that like, first chanting scene when, well, it's like when Tiffany's going to break up with Chucky or whatever, and... Like, it's the one moment I feel like Chucky was kind of like almost the sane one. Everything was going crazy around him, and he was just like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like, even this is fucked up for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, I don't even know what's happening anymore. Oh, his whole speech about staying, what does he say? Something about being staying a demonic, possessed doll. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, that's fine with me. And she's like, I want more. Yes. Well, I'm like, God. It, it's just funny because all these movies, all of you want, all you have wanted. wanted to was to put your body into like an actual a human, human mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden you don't want to do it because you're like, if I have to fuck with them for the rest of my life, I'll stay a doll, right? Um, I do love the hospital scene. I think it's wait, is it the hospital? I can't remember if it's in the hospital or the, I think it's a hospital where he's breaking down the door with an axe yep. yeah. and then he puts his face up to it and you're just waiting for him to go, here's Johnny. And then he's like, I can't I like think of anything to say. say. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect movie moment. Um, okay. So then uh, within all the scuffling that's going on and Tiffany is doing her voodoo chant, voodoo chant and she says, switch. Switch. In that moment, obviously she gets killed axed by Chucky. Yeah, she gets axed. Mm-hmm. In that, like I remember, even yesterday when we were watching it, I was like, "Oh well, it already worked," because like the shit was going crazy, like the lights were going off. She said switch. So, like, did you think that? Like, did you think it worked, or were you kind of like, "Oh, it didn't work." I figured that it did. I thought it yeah. did. And the only reason why is because they make it a such a big point to like show us when Glenn is doing the chant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's... They show the lights going crazy mm-hmm. and stuff in that. And I was like, well, I'm assuming that's why they showed us that. Just yeah. to kind of allude to like later. Like it actually did work. Yeah. Like that's yeah. almost like the symbolic thing that happens whenever it's actually like. Yeah. Which I think is smart because again, then the television show was able to continue the story. Because as fucking crazy as this series is, they've done a really good job Keeping with continuing mm-hmm. it instead of saying, you know what? We're going to forget Bride and Seed ever happened. Like a lot of these franchise Halloween. Hello. Like they do, like they just continue, like no matter how crazy it is, we're going to make this work. And they do, and they do a really good job. Even what's funny with Chucky, though, is that they do that, and a lot of times, like, they might not, like, wrap it up within a movie. Like, I feel like the show has done a lot of things that have answered questions to these movies. Yeah. And it's taken this long to get there, but we got there. Like, yeah. 
I just think they've done a really good job with like making every movie count, like to the television show. Like all of the stuff that's happened in these crazy movies are relevant still, you know. So I like that. And we get all of our characters back. Yeah, we do get all of our characters. Literally all of them, which is great. Um, I do love the five years later scene. Um, Glenn is adorable. Adorable. Literally exactly what I would think he would look like in human form. Glenda's got that terrible fucking Raggedy Ann wig on. Oh my God. And she's so deranged looking. It was Looking through that door. Yes. (laughs) And Awful. She's, she's like, uh, no, Miss Tilly, I'm talking about Glinda. Yeah, the housekeeper. <laughs> yeah, when she's talking about being scared of the doll. Oh, it's only a doll. No, I mean Glinda. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't babysit Glinda. No. I would take Glenn and Harpy. Oh, 100%. Oh, he was so, so sweet. I love his little blink that he does when he gets nervous, too. Yes. That's my favorite. Oh, is that what it was? He did it as a doll, I thought it was a twitch too. when he got stressed. Yeah. I thought well, it was yeah. a twitch when he was about to, like... Transform. Almost like oh. split personality. Yeah. Oh, I just took it as whenever he gets nervous or uncomfortable. That's well, clearly when he gets nervous, he pisses himself. Well, both, yeah. I think. I just thought the twitch was like a when he was about to go. Because we didn't really see it until what was the first time we saw the twitch? Oh, we see it several times in the movie, I feel like. I think we- it's about halfway through. Was it when after they had said they weren't going to kill anymore and he finds out both Because like yeah. he continues to have that those so. visions. And I just thought that that was like his murderous side, Glenda coming out. Oh. coming out, and like the twitch was like when that was peaking, and like it was trying to come out like mentally whatever. I that's what I took the eye twitch as. Oh, see, I just took it as that was just that's because you thought he was cute, a nervous twitch. <laughs> I just he was he was adorable. <laughs> well, Glenda's gonna come kill you. <laughs> That's fun. Wasn't that a psycho thing too? Because Norman Bates dressed like his mom. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's when he lost his mind. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, there was a lot of psycho stuff in this. A lot. Yeah. A lot of throwbacks. Um. All right. Well, I guess that pretty much concludes the discussion around the movie. Does anybody else got anything they want to add? On the last episode, Keith made a point to say that if he was in charge of the scripts, he'd give me all the accent roles, all that kind of stuff. I would. (laughs) It wasn't a lie. Okay, everybody, we're going to shift gears. It's time for Horror Fried Theater, Michael's favorite part of the whole show. (sighs) Mike... Please, please tell us what we're going to be doing today. Um, so this could potentially be kind of like a long scene. Okay. Because it's almost like two scenes that I just kind of um, ran put together. together. Ran together, yeah. It's an extended scene. Sort of, yeah. Okay. So it essentially starts with the scene where Glenn is in the prop room coming out of the box. So, when okay. he first is seeing Chucky and Tiffany and all of that stuff. Okay. All the way through the scene with them and the limo. Okay, oh, so that's okay. a pretty good length. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a lot of dialogue. That'll be fun. Yes. Okay. Will it, though? I don't know. Probably not. We'll see. So- <laughs> I'm hoping... Let me tell you what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Michael is Glenn or Glenda. Me too. So That's bad. my hope for today. Is it? Kinda, yeah. Hey, look, I already know he ain't gonna be doing Jennifer Taylor or Tiffany, so I feel oh, Chucky would be good though. Well you oh, are I think you're in for I think we're gonna be in for a treat. I think you are too, because you're off. Oh, okay. Oh, oh my god, is he Tiffany? Just Okay, hold on. tell us. Tell us, <laughs> please. The anticipation's killing me. So okay, so obviously with these scenes, we have a handful of characters, right? So Shockingly enough, we have so we got Glenn and Glenda, Chucky, Tiffany. We've got Tony has like a couple of lines, and then you've got Jennifer Tilly. Okay, is Tony the tech? Yes. Okay. So, um, I actually have Keith as Glenn and Glenda. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna be Chucky. Okay. Ashley's gonna be Tiffany, obviously. But Michael, I mean, I'm that's why you she's both here, y'all. Tony and Jennifer Tilly. 
Oh my god, Michael. You all, that's not going to happen. Okay. Well, Michael! <laughs> you can try it. And literally, Jennifer Tilly has what, like two lines? Yeah, she doesn't even yeah, say that say much. much. Okay. So I'm just look. Going back to look. that night in the hotel a year and a half ago where I couldn't do it. Well, oh, well, I mean, that you know, you've trained since then. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to say, you've um, had a lot of practice. So. And you've heard it enough. But to be to be fair, while I might have given you a more challenging role, you don't have as many lines, well, which I is what you that. always Michael, like. Michael, if you don't push yourself, you'll <clears throat> never know your your full capability. I have no response. Okay. Look, there are plenty of people out there that have Oscars from like two lines in a movie. Uh, amen. So make it good. Make it count. Yeah. Okay. It's not the no, role. No it's what pressure. it's not the role. It's what you do with it. <clears throat> okay. Right. Just like Jennifer Tilly was going to play Virgin Mary. Do you think she really knows how to do that? Hell no. But she was going to give it her all. Yes, she was. <laughs> oh my god. Um, Ashley. Yes. I'm expecting. Excellent. Uber <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> okay. Like think back a few weeks ago when we did Bound. Like really go for it. I'll go for it. I'm excited about it. I'll go for it. Well, I fully expect a British. Oh, you know you're going to get British Glenn from me. Okay. You ain't got to worry about shit over here. Okay. I'm a professional. <laughs> and I just got to play grumpy old Chucky. Yeah, so you're good at that. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I can look you like dead in the you eye. Can. <laughs> you can. You can, mommy. You can, mommy. <laughs> My sweet face. All right. <laughs> Are we ready? Oh, I was born ready. <laughs> if you, you stay, stay ready, ready, you ain't, you ain't got, got to get, get ready. ready. God. Let's see how many more drag race <laughs> things we can come yeah, up we've with. We've known each other for too long. Like, we just know. Literally. Okay. Obviously, I'm narrating. So, let's go. Greetings, maniacs and madmen. This is Dr. Gang Green, physician of fright and Nashville horror host. Coming up next is everyone's favorite segment, Horror Fried Theater. Grab your popcorn and refreshments, pull up a slab, and get ready for the madness. The scene opens with Glenn exiting the box he was packaged in, and he's inside a room on the studio lot that's housing a lot of scary figures that are much taller than he is. He continues to walk around seeing things like stage blood and several different casts of various creatures. He comes up on the bodies of Chucky and Tiffany, lying next to each other, not moving. <clears throat> Mom? Dad? I've dreamed of this moment all my life. I know this must come as quite a shock. It's going to be an adjustment for all of us. Look, I still have the necklace you left me. I've always wanted to know. What do these words mean? Is it our family motto? Please say something. It's because of the way I look, isn't it? For pity's sake, please wake up. <gasps> wake up! Ade dua dimbala. Awake! Lights start flashing and bulbs start breaking. We see the eyes of Chucky and Tiffany open and both are brought to life. Glenn is shocked. Tiff? Chucky? Ah! Who the hell are you? Shitface. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine Tiny Tim saying shitface. Tiny Tim. Yeah, from A Christmas Carol. This, yeah. is, this is Don Mancini, not Charles Dickens. <laughs> yes. so. With the bum leg. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm back. Welcome, Mommy. Hold on, I lost my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay. So Glenn just said shit face. Chucky begins snickering, right? <clears throat> yep. Okay. Now, what kind of a name is that? Where are your mother and father? Judging from that face, they're hiding. Shut up, you asshole. Well, come on. It looks like the kid fell off the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. <laughs> I mean, you gotta feel bad for the parents. I wonder what they must look like. Glenn holds up his hand, show them his Made in Japan logo on his arm. Chucky gasps. <gasps> oh my god. 
Konnichiwa, Akasan, and Akasan. <laughs> I cannot. Okay. What? No. No, wait. We, uh, you didn't. We didn't. Oh, sweet face. Come to mommy. Chucky faints. Tiffany embraces Glenn in a hug. She feels on her back for the connector that's attached to her. What? What's going on? Where are we? In Hollywood. I saw you on the telly. Chucky! Chucky, wake up! Look at us! We've had makeovers! We're movie stars! Chucky sits up. They hear a door open. Someone's walking up. Shit. Barbie mode. Chucky and Tiffany both pose and freeze. No, they're puppets. They don't walk and talk by themselves. Listen, if you want them to work, I'm going to have to take them apart. Tony walks up and disconnects Tiffany from her back piece and picks her up to bring her to a table with a bunch of tools on it. He slams her down on the table, face forward, and we see that he's going to unscrew her back. Chucky and Glenn stand by, watching. Is Mummy ill? The courts thought so. He detaches his connector from his back and begins to come to Tiffany's rescue. Tony's unscrewing the back of Tiffany's doll and Chucky's creeping behind him in preparation for the kill. Once the back of the doll's off, we see a fleshy inside that's beating. Tony looks shocked and Tiffany's head turns completely around. Heads up! Tony turns around and Chucky throws a wire around his neck and Tiffany grabs the other end, decapitating Tony and blood squirts everywhere. Chucky and Tiffany, covered in blood, look at each other and start making out and moaning. The stock raving mad. Glenn pees his pants and Chucky notices. Hey, you're pissing your pants. Chucky, she just had an accident. You mean he had an accident. They both look at Glenn. Don't look at me. Glenn's pants are pulled down and we see nothing is there. Chucky and Tiffany are both shocked. See what I tell you, a beautiful little girl. What? Are you blind? That's my boy. Yeah, he just hasn't had his growth spurt yet. Don't worry about it, son. You're a late bloomer, that's all. And it's high time that you had a real name. Let's see. I think I'm going to call you Glenn. Glenn? What kind of a name is that for a girl? Don't listen to him, honey. From now on, your name is Glinda. Another door opens and we see that Jennifer Tilly's walking into the room. Chucky and Tiffany both freeze again. Pressure. <laughs> you can. Dig deep. I can't do this. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Kate never did do nothing. Is it because we're looking at you? No. I'm not going to look at you. Just fire me. I fired people. I just got fired. Just fire me. I can't do it. I'm too... No, I'm too self-conscious. I can't do it. Michael! Fine, do I need to step in? Yeah. <clears throat> Jeez, what a mess. She, she continues to walk through the blood and decapitation scene unfazed. Not knowing it's real, Jennifer walks over to Chucky and pulls out her chocolate bar she was eating before. There you are, Mr. Good Bar. She begins to eat it and continues walking around. Tiffany notices who it is and is smitten. Jennifer Tilly? Jennifer <laughs> Jennifer kicks Tony's head on the ground, not realizing it's real. Hello. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> she picks the head up off the ground and holds it to her face. Chucky and Tiffany just sit and watch the scene unfold. Oh my god, you look so real. <laughs> you look so real. And you're cuter than my last boyfriend. I think we make a lovely couple. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
After being bombarded by reporters outside of the studio about the killing, Jennifer Tilly hops in a limo with Stan, the limo driver. Chucky, Tiffany, and Glenn are in the back of the limo driving through the streets of California. Tiffany is smitten. Chucky is drinking the champagne. <coughs> so, are you a pair of ninja assassins? Huh? Are you hitmen for the Yakuza? We're not from Japan. <laughs> We're from Jersey. Just think, Jennifer Tilly is playing me in a movie. It's absolute perfect casting. But that voice. I know. She sounds just like an angel. Now I've got it all figured out. I'm going to transfer my soul into Jennifer and you're going to transfer your soul into Redman. I'm down with that. We'll ditch these plastic bodies once and for all, and we'll be Hollywood's hottest couple. Well, what about me? Don't worry, Glenda. I've got that figured out, too. You're going to be a real-life girl. Boy. How? Well, I'm not getting pregnant again. I'll tell you that much. My mother always told me, once is a blessing, twice is a curse. Well, that explains your sister. The only sensible option is a surrogate mother. The partition rolls down and Jennifer Tilly reaches in to grab the bottle of champagne that's already gone. Jennifer makes a call to her assistant, Joan, and talks about how Redman is going to be coming over to her place tonight and what she has in store for him in order to secure her part. Stan looks upset. Jennifer assures him that Redman will be out of there by midnight. Chucky, Tiffany, and Glenn overhear the whole conversation. Oh my god. She's a complete slut. (laughs) Insane. So this is Dr. Gang Green saying... Goodbye, and thanks for joining us here at Horror Fried Theater. See you on the next episode of the Horror Fried Podcast, and be sure and join me every Saturday night for Dr. Gang Green Sanitarium, Saturdays at 9 p.m. on Nashville's NECAT Channel 9, and simulcast on the NECAT Roku channel and drgangreen.com. And as always, remember to stay mad. <laughs> See, I kept that off of you. That whole phone conversation with Joan wasn't in there. I tr- I, I had it in my head, but it wasn't going to come out. So <laughs> I didn't want to try. It was like mental constipation. It was. Performance anxiety. Definitely. <laughs> Next time. Look, we're bound to do another Jennifer <sighs> Tilly movie. Like, it's going to happen. Maybe. I won't put you through that. It's time for our final finger-licking thoughts, y'all, here at Horror Fried. We rate our films using the heat scale of a Nashville delicacy, hot chicken, on a scale of 1 to 5, no spice, mild, medium, hot, and Nashville hot. All right, Ashley, since you're our guest of honor today, what do you rate this movie? Okay, so I had forgotten that I had seen this movie back 394 years ago <laughs> in 2004 when I was about to graduate high school. Um, so re-watching it as an adult, I laughed my ass off, I have to say. And I kind of give it like a 4.25. Okay. I enjoyed it. That's a really solid <clears throat> score. I Mike. mean, you know. Um, I mean, we you can't talk about Chucky movies and talk about them seriously. So, right. I feel like going into it with that mindset, f- taking this movie for what it is, and everything. I mean, I'm I would say I'm like a three point seven five. Okay, good score, Michael. Um, I would give it. I'm gonna give it a three point five. Okay. Any reasoning behind that? Or just a 3.5? I mean, I like some camp, but it's a little ridiculous at point. <laughs> it points. is ridiculous, but isn't that the like, So basically, beauty of Jennifer it? Tilly makes up for. Jennifer Tilly definitely your score. makes up for everything, <laughs> yeah. yes. You know, I fully anticipated, like, bef- you know, obviously we knew this was on the agenda, and I fully anticipated, like, thinking to myself, I'm probably going to give this, like, a three. But watching it again, I'm like, Ashley, it is so funny. It is so funny. Jennifer Tilly is so good in it. And I love Glenn. So I'm going to go with a solid four. Honestly, like, I'm surprised myself by that. Because I really didn't think I would rate it that high. I'm surprised that all four of us have different scores. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're all pretty good. 
I don't know. It was just something about like, I hadn't watched this in a while. And like, like, obviously, you know it. And like going into it, I remember thinking, I mean, this is easily like the weakest of the first four, like five, because it's the fifth installment. So it's like the weakest. But then you watch it. And it's just like, at this point, they're like, fuck it, we're going there. And I kind of like that. Well, I think there's a lot to be said about the fact that like, this one doesn't take itself seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And all the previous ones <clears throat> had it's like the serious story of trying to get Chucky into a body was taking away from like the ridiculous aspect of it. Right. Mm-hmm. So when they finally just did away with that whole storyline, it opened up the door for them to be as ridiculous campy as they wanted. Yeah. Yeah. As much yeah, as they wanted. Because I to feel be. like in Bride and Chucky, like they step into that territory, but at the end of the day, it's still a horror movie, mm-hmm. you know, with some funny stuff. And I feel like this is a legit. For me, like a legit horror comedy. Yeah. And I really like it. It is. And I'm gonna I'm on the market for a Glendall, y'all. So <laughs> if you know where I can find a cheap one, let me know. And you know what I think is also funny is that this is the first one we don't hear like the Chucky voice. Like, did you think about that? Like the hi, I'm Chucky. Yeah, we Oh we, yeah. We never hear the doll voice in this movie. That is I true. didn't think about that. I didn't I either. either. Uh huh. Because to be honest, that voice is what creeped me out. It is the creepy. most. Well, yeah, because then it's like, want to play? No. <laughs> well, it's almost like they <laughs> didn't include it, and it's like we're not like Chucky's not a doll anymore. Like right. Chucky is Chucky alive, you know. So I didn't even think about that, but that's a really great point. Join us next time as we skip forward a few years to 2009's Jennifer's Body. So not a Jennifer Tilly movie, but on par considering the name thank you all so much for joining us if you like what you hear please like subscribe and rate the horror fried podcast and catch up on all our previous episodes on your favorite streaming service links are available on our instagram page once again we'd like to thank our friend dr gangrene for hosting horror fried theater this season y'all can find him on instagram youtube and at his website drgangrene.com. now it's time to swap spit and hit the road next time remember you've got to learn to tap into your killer instincts bye 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 guys adios why do you kill well um it's a hobby really it's helps us relax